I grew up in the city and I never really had a chance to be around farm life. To me, chickens were always white. They had a great big red gobbler <laughs> and their, their eggs were always white. I dreamed about being in the country and I knew someday that I would be. And while we're just starting out, this is not your Instagram farm, but guess what? I have my own chickens. Now I'm a real farm girl now. I even have my own muck boots. We jumped into chickens the first spring that we were on our new property. They're COVID chickens and I probably jumped the gun a bit quicker than I should have. And I'll be honest, we were quite uninformed. I've been thinking back to our first winter with chickens. I would lay awake if, I would lay awake in bed at night and I would worry about them, seriously. And then when the temperatures would drop below zero, I would start Googling ways to keep them warm. Of course, everyone knows when you use Google, worst case scenarios pop up. One night I actually grabbed a flashlight at one o'clock in the morning and I went outside to check on them. Winter time can be scary for new chicken owners. I really needed some peace of mind, so I started looking into some facts. One obvious fact is chickens know what to do. Their bodies can sense when the temperature starts to fall and they'll start to go through a molt. A molt is the natural shedding of old feathers and growth of new ones. Really, it just makes your chicken look like she's dying or they had the biggest slumber party and pillow fight. They won't lose all of their feathers at once. They'll usually start up by their heads and then it progresses all the way down to their tails. Hello. But then you'll get some oddballs that look naked. When this happens, chickens will decrease or stop egg production because both eggs and feathers require a protein and a lot of it. We can help them through this by adding extra vitamins and supplements and also black oil sunflower seeds. The girls love black oil sunflower seeds. Ow! 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 <laughs> Another thing I found to be true is that a chicken's internal temp is between 104 and 107 degrees Fahrenheit. Chickens keep warm. Chickens are very good at surviving in cold temps, more so in the summer months. They are wrapped in this really thick down coat. Imagine walking around in 90 degree weather in a down coat that you can't take off. I think you'd be happier in the cooler months with that down coat on. Hello, pretty girl. I'm gonna lay lots of eggs this year. <laughs> hey, what did you say? What I found when I started looking around for ways to keep my girls safe and warm and to give me peace of mind, it starts with the coop. There's a lot of debate about the roost. Should you have a flat roost, a bar, maybe a branch? We keep a flat roost bar so that they can cover up their whole feet when they fluff up and lay down. If the bar is round and they have to grip, the bottoms of their feet can be exposed and cause frostbite. I wanted to make our coop draft free. When chickens are in a small area, they generate a lot of heat and moisture. The moisture has to go somewhere. If there isn't adequate ventilation, then the ammonia from their droppings and the water from their breath can't escape. The water can cause frostbite on their waddles and their combs and their feet, and the droppings can cause ammonia and it's harmful for their respiratory systems. In here, we do not keep any water or food. All that is kept out in the run. We use these thick tarps, they're greenhouse tarps to hold in heat. And you can't see it, but behind the OSB boards, there is insulation. We had to put up the OSB boards because the chickens will peck at the insulation. On a really, really cold night, like negative 10, you come in this coop and it is surprisingly warmer in here. I also hang these curtains. I hang curtains out here because if I had tarps, I wouldn't be able to move them. We also line the outside of their run with greenhouse tarps to keep the drafts and the snow out. I don't know if you know this, but chickens are really dusty creatures. So when we put the tarps up, we made sure to keep a couple inches open at the top so their coop is draft free, but it's well ventilated. Water, dust, and ammonia can escape through the ventilation at the top. 
We use sand in our coop and run all year round. It helps, um, it keeps it cleaner and it helps for better for sifting, getting the poop out. But when it gets cold, we start the deep litter method. We like to use a deep litter method where we live. We can get some really cold temperatures around here, negative 20 wind chill. The only smell that I can smell are pine shavings. But you can't just come in here and dump pine shavings. You have to mix it up. There's a science to it. It's composting. And in the spring, we're gonna pull it out and put it in our compost pile and use it for the garden beds. Water can be really tricky in the winter time. And we're fortunate enough to be able to run a line from inside the barn to outside the coop. Mike's cleaning out the run right now, but this is their watering can. We did have a metal one, but because of our well water, it reacted and it corroded. Some people, they don't have electricity at all, so they have to come outside and keep breaking up the ice. And that's okay, that doesn't work for us. Mike and I, we both work. And it gets pretty cold out here. We'd be out here probably three or four times a day doing that, so. Yes, it's plastic, but it works. Hello. Hello. Hi, what are you doing? In the winter, we also like to add crap corn to their diet. And they know what this is. <laughs> this is like sugar to them, right? You want some of this? Come on. Even though the snow is melting, as you can see, they still can't free range. They're usually not even outside um, when there's snow out, but it's pretty warm out today. Chickens are perfectly fine on their layer feed. But I like to give them greens. I can go to my local grocery store and buy a, um, a bunch of kale for a buck. On super, super cold days, I'll make them warm oatmeal. It's probably more for me than them because I don't really think that warm oatmeal matters. We also had a really warm winter last year and what, happened is, what happens is the ground is frozen, but we have this really fast thaw with eight to 10 inches of snow and because the ground is frozen, it likes to go inside of the run because it has nowhere else to go. With the snow melting so quickly and not having any ditches up as a temporary stop there, I'm just putting some buckets up to collect the uh, melting snow. So we have gutters and we're going to put them up. The gutters should be up on the barn, but instead they're on the floor in the barn. That'll just be another job to do this spring. Let's talk about heat. Heat is such a widely debated topic amongst backyard chicken owners. Trust me, when I first got my chickens, I was researching all over the place trying to find the answer to this heated subject. I don't know if it's just like an aha moment or what. I started looking around at all the other animals that live outdoors. The pretty cardinals, the squirrels, the deer, they don't have heat. And they don't have near the protection and the love that I give my chickens either. And they do just fine. I would never condemn anybody for choosing heat. Never ever. You do you. If that's what you need to do to keep your chickens safe, just choose. I would just say, just choose wisely. Like I said, we've had negative 25 degree wind chills. It's always warmer inside the barn. This is our, going on our third year with the girls, so our third winter. And, uh... They're fine. Besides that, I think that chickens were around long before electricity. I've got a, a wild bone cat called Frankie who's completely vicious in the <laughs> Aren't you? Absolute killer. Hi, Frankie Spanky. Aww. <laughs> He's a killer, isn't he? He is a killer. A wild barn cat. A wild killer. And Jack. Hey. Get it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, 
Nice aim, honey. <laughs> That's funny. Just throw some towards the back, too. Some of the bullies won't let the girls get the scratch. That whole pecking order thing. What about a light to lay eggs? While it is true that decreased light does increase egg laying, unless you have pullets because they'll usually lay their first winter, some people choose to supplement light and some do not. These Christmas lights are not meant for supplement lighting. In fact, we haven't turned them on in two years. I, I just have been lazy and I need to take them down. We have chosen not to supplement light because we naturally want to let our girls have a break. They just went through a hard molt. It's hard on their bodies. A hen is born with as many eggs as she will lay in her lifetime. Once she lays them all, that's it. You'll start to notice after the winter solstice that they will start laying again. One month ago, we were getting two to four eggs a week, and now we're getting two to four eggs daily. One of my biggest pet peeves is seeing a sweater on a chicken. Yes, you'll notice a cute little hat in my thumbnail, but that was just for a picture. I'll be honest with you, it took me an hour to get 10 seconds worth for a thumbnail picture. Chickens fluff up to create and trap heat. If I put clothing on them, this will prevent them from being able to fluff up and it will do more harm than good. We don't do fancy chicken breeds. Well, hang on. Chewy booby. Chewy has a mullet. I had to cut away the feathers from his face because he was dipping them in the watering can. And then they were freezing. But other than that, we don't do the fancy breeds. All of our chickens are really cold hardy, except for our little bantam. But Poppy knows how to snuggle between two fat hens, and this is her second winter, and she's done okay. If you live in a state that gets really, really cold, I would always recommend cold hardy breeds. My two favorite are the Black Australorps and the Buff Orpingtons. They are two amazing breeds, very docile. But all in all, our girls, they do really, really well. One breed that I would definitely stay away from, I see a lot of people getting, are frizzles. Frizzles aren't technically a, um, a breed, they're more of a mutation. They have these curly feathers, and they're not flat, so they have a hard time puffing up and trapping in their heat. And I don't wanna lay awake worrying about them all night. <laughs> Doing some research has really relieved some of my worry, and while taking care of animals in the winter can be more challenging, finding ways to ease that worry can be a huge help. If you are on the fence about getting chickens or you're someone that's really interested, check out this video up here for a few facts to consider before getting chickens. My name is Kristen and I'm so happy that you hung out with me today. Thanks for taking some time out of your day. I hope you have a really blessed week and I hope to see you next time. Take care. Hi, Benny Winnie. Hello, you ferocious barn cat. <laughs> you killer.